Welcome, families, to Storytime at the Harvard Museums of Science and Culture. If you've attended our program before, welcome back. If this is your first time, we're glad you're here. We hope this program engages everyone in your family, from the little kids to the grown-ups. We read picture books that you might find at your local library or at school that connect to something in the museums. First, we'll read the story, then look closely at some objects from the museums. We hope you enjoy today's story. Hello, and welcome to Storytime. I'm so glad you're here today. My name is Carol. Do you like to eat candy and other sweet things? Me too. Have you ever eaten honey? Do you know where honey comes from? Yes, from bees. Bees make honey in their hives and fill their combs with it. Well, today's story takes place in the Okavango Delta of Botswana in Southern Africa. Many kinds of animals live there. Our story features two main characters who like to find beehives. The greater honey guide bird Indicator Indicator is its scientific name, and the honey badger, whose scientific name is Melivora capensi. The greater honey guide bird has an opportunistic relationship with the honey badger, as it has been observed to feed on the scraps from the beehives left behind by the honey badger. According to folklore, the bird leads the badger to ransack a bee's nest and then feeds on any larva left behind. But there's no proof of this yet. Our story today is Honey, Honey, Lion. This book was written and illustrated by Jan Brett and published in 2005 by G.P. Putnam's Sons. And we're reading this story today with permission from the publisher. Honey, Honey, Lion, a story from Africa. In Africa, the honey guide and the honey badger are partners when it comes to honey. The little bird follows a bee into its hive. And then she leads the honey badger there to break it open with its big, strong claws. Together, they share the sweetness. And that is the way it has always been. Maybe this day, badger was hungrier than usual. Maybe he forgot about honey guide who showed him the way. Or he could have been thinking, my strong claws do all the hard work. Whatever the reason, that day, Badger would not share. Honey Guide scolded Badger as he waddled back to the jackalberry tree, his tummy almost touching the ground. She fussed and fumed as he tried to fit into his burrow. Finally, she cried out to all the other animals, no fair, no fair. And soon all the guinea hens were broadcasting the news. Honey Guide is in a major rage. But Badger, he didn't hear. He was sound asleep, smiling, snoring, and hiccuping from his big meal. Grumph! Badger roared out the largest hiccup of all, and its deep, low rumble gave Honey Guide an idea. What do you think Honey Guide is going to do? The next morning, Badger woke up hungry, his tummy flat as a pancake. And that is when Honey Guide flew by 
heading for the great gray baobab. Honey, 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 she cried, grinning. The little bird zigzagged over its large roots. Pitter-patter, and Badger ran after her. Pitter-patter. Honey Guide flew low across the water hole. Splish, splash, and Badger paddled after her. Splish, splash. Honey Guide glided to the top of a termite mound and bounced on one foot. Sprung. Badger scrambled to the top and bounced off. Sprung. Honey Guide landed on a hollow log. It echoed as she stomped along. Boom, boom. And Badger hurried to catch up. Boom, boom. Next, Honey Guide flitted through a stand of papyrus. Tall, dry reeds waved back and forth. Clickety-click, clickety-click. Badger traipsed along, muttering, where is that honey? The papyrus rattled as he went by. Clickety-click. Honey Guide led him through a field of golden bristle grass. Swish, swish. Badger huffed and puffed, but the thought of the delicious meal waiting for him kept him going. Swish, swish. By now, Badger was tired and wet, itchy and sore, but he didn't slow down because Honey Guide was just in front of him. She flashed her wings, fanned her tail, and dove under an acacia tree. Badger charged in after her, singing triumphantly, Honey, honey, lion. Oh my gosh. Lion, lion, lion. Badger turned on his tail and ran. Swish, swish through the grass. Clickety click into the papyrus. Boom, boom over the hollow log. Sprung over the termite mound. Splish, splash across the water hole. Pitter patter over the baobab roots. And look, the lion is chasing him the whole time. Badger dashed into his burrow. Honey Guide cheered. In a flash, Badger was as far from the entrance as he could be. Right behind him was Lion's huge paw batting the air, but he couldn't reach him. And that is the closest any animal could be to an angry lion and live to tell the tale. That evening, Mongoose squeaked to Elephant, who trumpeted to Hippo, who bellowed to Warthog, who squealed to Bishop Bird, who piped to Hyena, who whooped to the Zebra, who snorted to Giraffe, who was overheard by Guinea Hen, who bugled it far and wide. It was the Bush Telegraph, and it said, if Honey Guide leads you to a beehive, be sure and reward her, or next time, she will lead you to a lion. That's the end of our story. I hope you like that story. I think the honey badger learned an important lesson about sharing, don't you? Well, many animals like sweet foods, but honey badgers don't really want to eat honey. They raid the beehives in search of bee larvae, the nutritious. Honey guide birds don't really want to eat the honey either. They feed on the larvae and also the beeswax. We humans do enjoy sweet foods. Many people around the world like to eat honey or other kinds of sweeteners. Do you know that the Greater Honey Guide is named for a remarkable habit of guiding humans to wild bees' nests? 
This behavior is well studied in a rare example of mutualistic foraging partnership between humans and free-living wild animals. Wild honey guides have demonstrated the capability to understand a human call to accompany them to locate honey. As they go together, the honey guide attracts the person's attention with wavering, chattering sounds. It flies toward an occupied bee's nest and then stops and calls again. As in other situations, it spreads its tail, showing the white spots, and then bounds upward to his perch. If the followers are native honey hunters, when they reach the nest, they calm the adult bees with smoke, and they open the nest with axes or machetes. Once the hive is open and the honey is taken, the bird gets to eat the remaining larvae and beeswax. Well, I think I'd rather have the honey. That's all for today. See you next time.